Hi there everyone, my name is Fairy or the Hedge Witch and welcome back to my sacred space. This is the third and final video that I'm filming in my clump of video filmings today. Uh, I had some audio issues earlier. Uh, I'm hoping that everything is fixed. So hopefully this one goes smoothly. So today I wanted to um, bring you guys a little bit of a video that's more geared towards like beginner witches TM, like baby witches. And if you aren't a beginner witch, um, I would be curious to hear um, what you guys think about what I have to say in this video, if you agree or if you have other things to add. So today I'm going to be talking about five things I regret doing when I first started practicing witchcraft. But let's just go ahead and jump right into these topics. I'm hoping today I won't talk as much and this will be a shorter video. <laughs> so the first thing that I regret um, doing or thinking when I first started witchcraft was um, thinking that I needed to have like an altar space or just more space than I did in order to practice. When I first started witchcraft, I was, I believe, 17, 16 or 17 years old. Now my family is Lutheran, so I was raised Lutheran. Uh, my parents are not pagan by any means, so there wasn't really a space in my house for me to have an altar aside from in my bedroom. And even then I was like a minor, so I was still living under my parents' roof and I felt kind of weird about having this like, pagan altar in their like good Christian household. My parents aren't like wildly religious or anything. They're actually really cool, but I still felt weird about it, especially when I was that age. And then when I turned 18, um, I ended up moving away for college, but um, at my university that I used to go to, you were required to live in the dorms for two years. And that university does not offer any single rooms so you have to have at least one roommate if not two also uh it's not like a super nice university so the dorms are pretty small and i just didn't have any space or like privacy in order to do any magic or so i thought but yeah having not enough space was a big reason why i didn't practice very much in college and i really regret it you really don't need to have like a huge altar space like I have a fairly excessively sized altar in my opinion um, and I have my own private bedroom now of course because I'm an adult um, so I pay for my own housing and stuff some of the things that you can do and a lot of the things that I do now even are not things that you need like a whole setup in order to do you really don't need a lot of space to do tarot um, depending on like if you have a roommate like if you're in a dorm or something and like me my sophomore year roommate was Christian like very aggressively Christian so I didn't feel comfortable doing that in front of her um, just because she was kind of weird about it but if that's not the case if your roommate doesn't care or if you don't have a roommate you just don't have much space tarot is something that you can definitely do you can also do sigils uh, sigils don't take any space you pretty much can just make them on a sheet of paper and you don't have to burn them to activate them. You can shred them, you can write them on your body, you can flush them down the toilet, you can do a whole bunch of stuff to activate sigils. You can also just do entries in your Book of Shadows or your grimoire. Um, you could do research on deities, you can do research on sabbats, on different types of divination, on different types of spell works, on the elements. Like, there's so much stuff that you can do and I just thought that if I wasn't able to do like complicated spells and rituals that like I wasn't a witch or like I shouldn't be a practicing witch so I just didn't practice. Now I of course did do some of these things from time to time. Um, I did do tarot readings when I was in private and I did do sigils and stuff but um, by no means was I anywhere near as active with my practice as I am now. And that ties into my second thing that I regret which is I regret not practicing enough. For probably the first three years that I was a witch um, I just was a little bit scared to really like delve into doing a lot of practicing. Now I've always done tarot pretty regularly. I love doing tarot. It's one of my absolute favorite things to do in the craft. So um, I did do that, but it wasn't very often that I was trying to like write spells or go outside to do rituals or go on walks or 
really anything like that. And again, it kind of ties into the space thing, but it also ties into like, I felt like I needed um, more money in order to buy like certain tools to do witchcraft, which is also absolutely not true. I think that there are a lot of um, witches and pagans online that um, make you think that you need to buy a lot of things in order to be a witch, but really all you need is your own two hands to do magic. And in my head I knew that, but I felt like in order to be a real witch, like everybody that I was watching, that I needed to have you know, X, Y, Z tools, and I just didn't have the money for that. So then when I did have my own space and I was able to practice more, or I felt more comfortable practicing more, I felt like I was years behind where I should have been, should have been. Obviously, of course, everybody learns and grows and does things at their own pace, but if I had actually practiced for those few years, um, I think that I would have been a lot more comfortable with some of the spells and practices that I started trying once I had my own house. I was also really scared to make mistakes during that time. Um, and honestly, that's just part of learning. Uh, I have people that talk to me that are beginners that are like, oh, fairy, I'm like terrified that I'm gonna like summon a demon or like <laughs> absolutely ruin my life. And honestly, in my opinion, there's not really that much you can do that's either not irreversible um, or that's like actually gonna blow up in your face if you mess it up. The only times that I've really had like a spell go wrong, it just doesn't work or it doesn't work well or um, it gives me the wrong thing um, where like I wasn't specific enough or I was too specific and ended up not being what I actually wanted. The third thing, that's not a three, that's a five. <laughs> The third thing that I regret doing as a beginner witch was not exploring more paths. So maybe this is just me, but I feel like everybody on social media, if you ask them like what type of witch they are, they always say that they're an eclectic pagan or an eclectic witch or eclectic Wiccan. If you don't know what that means, it pretty much means that um, that person just picks and chooses different practices from different paths and kind of does a little bit of everything and makes it into their own thing. And I think that <laughs> when I heard that the first time I was like, okay, so um, for example, if I was a green witch, I would only do herb magic and nothing else. And I was like, well, I want to do more than just herb magic. So like, obviously that means I'm an eclectic pagan when that isn't really the case. <laughs> I think of it now more as like a focus on something. So if I identified as a green witch, I might be focusing on herbs and herbalism, but I will still do things with crystals and tarot readings and like shadow work and stuff like that. That was just a bit of a disconnect, I guess, for me, um, especially because so many people identify as eclectic and um, I just didn't really fully understand what it meant to have a more specific path. I think if I had um, kind of done some more research on different types of paths, I would have been able to find my current path a lot more quickly um, and been a lot more happier with my practice a lot more quickly. And in that same vein, number four, I really regret brushing off religion. So when I first started witchcraft, I think I had a bit of a bad taste in my mouth when it came to religion because I was raised Christian, as I mentioned. And I just really was like, all right, listen, I'm an adult now and I just really don't want to do any religious stuff. Like even to this day, I don't really believe in like literal gods in the sky. That's not a thing that I vibe with. And I had a vague idea of what paganism was and what it meant to be pagan. But um, even though I knew it wasn't like an organized religion, I still just like wasn't interested in it at all. But once I started practicing Wicca and then subsequently just paganism later on, I found that it really gave me like a, a greater sense of purpose and uh, more focus in my spells, I guess. As you guys may or may not know, I work with the goddess Bast or Basthet um, from the Egyptian pantheon. And while I said I don't really believe in like an actual physical god or goddess that exists somewhere, um, I do believe in the spiritual energies of different gods and goddesses and those different archetypes. So it's really helped me focus my spells energies by calling upon certain deities that can kind of help really focus the energy of my different spells. It's also really helpful to have like spirits around you that um, 
you talk to regularly and that you interact with regularly. Um, I feel like they help me a lot when it comes to like divination and tarot readings. Um, and they sometimes they'll do things to get my attention. Of course, you don't have to be religious. Absolutely not. Um, even for a while there, I was just a witch. I have plenty of friends who are just witches and not pagan or Wiccan, and that's awesome. I just find for me personally, it's been really cool to have that kind of connection. I think even if you don't think you're going to be interested in religion, it might be worth just looking at to see if it's something you want to try. And if not, then cool. And number five, the last thing and the biggest thing that I regret not doing as a beginner witch is I didn't work in my book of shadows like ever. So when I was a beginner witch, I somehow got it into my head that if I was putting something into my book of shadows or my grimoire, that it had to be a spell that I had already done and had like perfected. It's, I was gonna say it's ridiculous. It's not necessarily ridiculous. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that that's what they do and it works for them, but I really regret doing that because um, there are tons of spells from my early days of witchcraft that are just gone. Like I, there's no record of them anymore because I like made them up on the spot. And I was like, well, if this works, then I'll write it down and, you know, tweak it and stuff. But I just never did or I forgot. And like, if I had just written it down to start with, I would still have record of these spells and I would be able to look back on them to see how I've improved, to see if I wanted to use the spell again, um, maybe to like offer to beginner witches as like, hey, here's a good spell that I used once for this thing that you might like. I just lost such a big chunk of time with my practice. Like, um, if you guys watch my uh, Book of Shadows and Grimoire tour, there's like not that many spells in my Book of Shadows. <laughs> and it's because all of them are just in my brain. And uh, they're gone now because I have awful memory. <laughs> and I wish I had like recorded my experiences more, um, like after a spell, how did it go? Uh, things with like the shadow people that I was seeing, any paranormal experiences, uh, more research. There was just so much stuff that I didn't write down. Um, or I was like, oh, I'll just bookmark this and I'll write it down later. But then I, I would just never do it. <laughs> and I think I was just scared because I wanted my book to be like perfect. When in reality, like it's, it's not meant to be. Um, it's supposed to be a living embodiment of my practice and it's supposed to like move and change and develop with me as I develop as a witch and a pagan. That's just really my biggest regret. Um, I, If you're a beginner, I really urge you to record what you're doing. You don't have to share it with anybody. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can just be a pencil on some lined paper and you write out like some words that you said during a spell and the ingredients or you write down your sigil that you made and you keep that. It just really sucks. And I wish I had more to show for my early days, but I just have nothing. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, if you're a beginner, I hope that you can take some of this advice to heart and maybe um, think about your own practice and like what these things might mean to you. Or if there's anything else that you're like, yeah, you know, maybe in five years, um, I would want to see what I was doing with this idea or something like that. If you're a more experienced witch, let me know down below if you guys agree with these or if there's anything you want to add for any beginner witches that might be reading the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye!